Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 24th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I keep saying this about network traffic, but the same is also true about systems. If you look at systems or network traffic at a time of an incident, well, uh, it's kind of too late to figure out what's normal. And that can be very important to know as you need to identify if a certain artifact that you're seeing is just, well, the way the system is supposed to behave or uh, maybe something that's related to the attack. Where this came up was in an incident that Boyan was working on. And uh, this was a list of domain names that the victim them found in wininet.dll. Now, wininet.dll is uh, one of those basic Windows uh, libraries that deals uh, with uh, network connections. And it had a very long and extensive list of domains here, uh, some of them relatively obscure. Well, it turned out that this was perfectly normal. Modern operating systems, modern browsers are supporting a feature referred to as strict transport security, where a website may indicate that it's only accessible via HTTPS. Well, uh, as part of this feature, there's also a preload capability where you can add your website to a list of websites that are automatically being flagged as HTTPS only by the operating system or the browser. And it turns out that wininet.dll contains exactly that list. So this is a list of websites that register themselves as being HTTPS only. And the list, of course, well, uh, the only common denominator here is that these websites are listed. It doesn't necessarily mean that all these websites are legitimate or even non-malicious. You may very well register a malicious website or a website in that list uh, could, of course, easily be compromised. I've seen cases like this uh, before where um, investigators, when they started looking at a system without sort of considering, again, what's normal, for example, identified block lists that were installed uh, by security tools as evidence of compromise because, of course, these block lists often are listing uh, malicious uh, host names. Good old Excel 4 macros are certainly on their way out. Out and last year, uh, Microsoft uh, did start to uh, disable or at least uh, put uh, switches in place uh, to disable Excel for macros and disable them in its uh, cloud platform. Microsoft is now continuing with this and make the setting where Excel for macros are disabled uh, default. But that doesn't mean that Excel 4 macros are no longer being used by attackers. Xavier looked at an example that was submitted by one of our readers, actually a pretty well done Excel spreadsheet with a mix of Visual Basic for applications and Excel for macros. The Excel spreadsheet here claimed to come from a real estate company. The real estate company does actually exist. It's a real company. And uh, the content of uh, the particular spreadsheet looked somewhat uh, legit. It described a particular uh, penthouse uh, property. And of course, once the user enabled uh, macros, uh, then uh, the pictures of the property and uh, various statistics and uh, specifications of the property were shown, but also a macro executed installing additional malware. Investigating this hasn't uh, quite concluded yet. It also connects to an interesting domain, acrobatrelay.com, which of course uh, could pass a cursor inspection as something related with Adobe Acrobat. And then we got updates from F5. Luckily, nothing sort of that I would rate an emergency. Uh, the highest CVSS score of 8.7 goes to a vulnerability that does require authentication as the user or as admin and allows the injection of JavaScript code. What's sort of interesting about this vulnerability is that in order to attack it, the attacker needs to use undisclosed API endpoints. A little bit of pattern here that I've seen uh, in sort of these web APIs where sometimes uh, features or API endpoints are being implemented, not necessarily be 
not to say documented or uh, publicized as usable, but uh, as a result, also not well tested and riddled sometimes with these uh, security vulnerabilities. So update uh, as you get around to it. Like I said, not an emergency. And McAfee fixed uh, two vulnerabilities uh, in its product. Uh, one is a command injection vulnerability, but requires local uh, user access. So really a privilege escalation vulnerability. Same for the second one. First one is sort of interesting. Uh, there is a cleanup.exe command that's being executed and essentially a low privileged user is able to replace uh, that file. Similar for the second vulnerability, the openSL.con file can be modified by a normal user and uh, that is sort of how a code can be executed as a system. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. If I missed the story or if you have anything that uh, you think I should cover, uh, send me an email or contact me via Slack and uh, I'll uh, gladly uh, consider it. That's it and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.